What would you do if all odds were against you? You love to study, but you can't hold a pencil or pen without help. You need extra 45 minutes at every exam. Your mother has to accompany you to climb stairs at exam centers. You need 100 approvals to get the extra time and your parents to these centers. This odd is called dysgraphia and this passionate lady scored 96% in her accountancy in class 12 and topped her class in MCOM. This lady wants to pursue a PhD. And this is the meaning of grit and determination. And this is a story worth listening to. Please welcome the creator of Foodie Diwani and the Simplistic Finance blog, the incredible Rifa Rafiq Juwali, all the way from Mumbai, India. And guys, if this is your first time at Candid with Candy, I'm Candy, your host for the show. Do not forget to subscribe. So Rifa, thank you so much for coming to Candid with Candy. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for thinking that I am worthy enough for being invited. Uh, I understand that uh, you had a condition called dysgraphia, which was discovered very, very late in your life. Yeah. Right. However, um, because of this condition, and I'll just, you know, uh, also ask you to explain what it is. Um, You've gone through a lot of um, problems in your life, especially in your school life, right? Yeah. So can you just tell us a little bit about that journey and specifically the role of your parents? Because I think yeah. they have been really, really um, the support system yeah. that you needed. Completely. But in the year 1998, they discovered that I wasn't able to hold a pencil in hand. There was an issue which is I wasn't able to hold the pencil. The first whole year, I wasn't able to write anything at all. And the first two years went like that. My school wasn't, wasn't uh, specifically for the uh, differently able or especially able to be flat. It was a normal school. Mm-hmm. But they obviously had to face a lot of hardships. And the, the amount of support which they gave, not only them, my grandparents, both, both all four of them were a big role to play in making me what I am today. Because uh, all of them used to battle me, you know, they used to be like, you can do it, I know you can do it. And they mm. believed in me more than I did in myself. I remember a very special anecdote in the year 2000, uh, should see in itself, when I was preparing for my IPCC examinations of CA. I talked about that to my grandmother. She told me, I know you can do it. And you know, she used to actually sit with me till I used to study for my examinations. I used to be awake till 2, 2, 3, 3 a.m. when I had papers and she used to be awake with me till then. Wow. And that has been one of the biggest source of motivation to my mother, my father. My mother, she used to drop me to my examination. At some center, she had even had to wait for two, three, two, two, three hours at a stretch. Because obviously, I wasn't able to travel alone. And I guess that is what has built me as a person, my father, he gave me wings to fly. Um, you know, you just described that your mother had to go with you to the examination centers uh, because you couldn't go by yourself, right? What yeah. I wanted to um, ask you is dysgraphia as a condition, you know? Yeah. What exactly is it, right? Dysgraphia uh, was uh, a thing where my zip my, the power of my grips was affected. Like earlier, when I started writing by my own self in 2001-2002 after therapy, after going through a lot of therapy, I used to write with grips attached to my pens and pencils. Now, I can write properly, but then you get a rubber grip, right? I used to write with them. How did it affect your ability to walk? Walking was fine. Uh, climbing stairs was a little issue. It is still is, to be frank, it still is. But uh, my parents, my sisters, even now, they are a bit supportive. Like if they know that I cannot climb somewhere, they will hold my hand. Like my grandfather, he was 
an Indian Navy. He retired as a lieutenant. He is someone who I adore. No, that's that's fantastic, Jim. You know, yeah. having a loving and supportive family. You know, this is the product. You know, you are you're sitting here talking to somebody else, talking about your life story and being so proud about it. One more thing that you just mentioned, right? You know, climbing stairs is a problem. and i'm just trying yeah. to get back to uh, you know the fact that your mother had to uh, really come with you when you had to yeah. give your exams etc also said that you had issues you know with um getting on to the bus because they they move so quickly yes and that is why we never travel to buses at all like i remember traveling to buses as a kid after that we never travel to buses uh, there is a very another anecdote when i was in my 12th standard My father is a mine engineer, so he is most of the times on ship on his job, right? So in the twelfth standard, the center which we got, we didn't have a lift over there, which is a small stairs, you know, like there are small stairs, and I can climb on them. So there is a whole handle, then I can climb. But if it is not, then I need her by my side. So there is a gap between two stairs. I I run away from there. I cannot. <laughs> yeah. and you know why i'm asking you these questions in particular yeah. because this is a very um you know rare condition and people don't relate yeah. to saying you know for example when you say that you know i need my mother to help me out everybody's wondering yeah. why but when you are actually explaining that you know because yeah. this condition uh you know you need help in terms of the grip of your feet and your fingers aren't great So you know you have that fear of you know oh my god I'm going to Well and well now it has been better so Absolutely absolutely over the years uh, you know Yeah this is also a lot of practice and therapy right Yeah yeah I've been going through that for since as you said as little as what 3 4 years old Yeah exactly Yeah and I'm sure as you keep growing and right now you're a very young woman as you keep growing you know your motor skills and your grip will only get better Yeah but I just wanted to ensure that you know people are aware that you know such things exist too, right? Yeah. That if and it's fine to do to it, you know. There are times when it is termed as a taboo, because whenever uh, there are there were times when my mother used to take me to weddings as well, you know, normal when I was almost ten to twelve years old. And if there's a lot of crowd behind me, I cannot climb stairs very very easily. What if I fall? You have that thing. So then. People used to look at her. Yeah, they do a certain child does a year. But she then used to be like, "Okay, I know you will do it." Because sometimes it is like, you know, there is sometimes a scene is created. Sometimes you know, some right. you people call, feel like that. Right. You call for attention, and you know, absolutely. Yeah. And that is why I really wanted to, you know, um, give a big shout out to your parents for that. Right. I mean, yeah. not not yeah. once they feel. you know they were uh, it was uh, an awkward situation for you or you know yeah you know they, they were there like throughout to support and encourage no matter what people thought and, and that, they have actually instilled this in me that i can do anything and everything you already you also experienced experienced you know um a lot of people commenting on your body shape size this is a great platform for you to share you know uh, what people have been telling you and how you've been reacting to those you know comments yeah. and what is your message like in general when we talk about you know body shaming i am a complete food lover like if you uh, if there is a buffet counter in a wedding and there is desserts and if you leave me there i can stay there all day so people look at me as if i'm doing a very bad thing mm. why i am eating what i want to eat See, that is something which I am fed up of people doing. That is, which is indirectly it is coming on your body. See, I feel all of us has been made in a very unique way by the Almighty. He loves us the way we are. Why should we change ourselves for someone else? Or even if people torment on what we look like, I don't understand their mentality where they come from. Has anybody directly? Said anything to you about you know the way you look or your weight or? But directly, indirectly, the whole time that at weddings, if I am peacefully eating my prawns fried and uh, my desserts, people will be like, 
Dia bilang dengan mother, oh wow, he's eating, he's eating and eating peacefully. In diet, little twenty one. You know, I understand that very well now because I am not someone who is a child. If you cannot love yourself the way you are, no one will love you the way you are. One thing that I'm very fascinated about is, uh, you know, you have close to nine thousand followers on, you know, Foodie Diwani. What is the dream of Fruity Diwani, and how did you manage to get so many followers? Followers happen, like they didn't happen overnight. So <laughs> I feel Fruity Diwani as a platform has grown over the last four years. I was a social recluse when I started out with Fruity Diwani. I was going through a very very bad failure, and Fruity Diwani actually helped me overcome that. So I know. I want Foodie Diwani to be a platform wherein all of those food businesses who want to a shout out or who want to collaborate can freely come to me and freely approach me for a collaboration or for a shout out. Not just food, stationery, crafts as well. Not beauty and lifestyle and makeup, no. Because that is not my cup of tea. I myself don't use it. Pudi Diwani is a baby of mine, which I am nurturing over the last four years. I didn't know photography, food, for the uh, the ABC of food photography, nothing. Now I know the basics at least. You know, you touched upon a very important thing, and I'll just like to reiterate. Yeah. When one is really down, right? Something has gone bad. Some failure has happened. When you find, when you find a channel, you look for a channel. You kind of. You know, like a like an outlet, right? Like for you, for yeah. Puri Diwani, um, and look at the potential that it just unleashed, which you never knew existed. You know, because you are a hardcore finance person, and Puri Diwani, yeah. the complete opposite. But you love both. You know, life doesn't have to. Be, I love both. You, you, I love. You're both. not. Yeah. You know, you're not a horse, right? You know, it, it doesn't yeah. have to be. You know, just one direction, and yeah. you know, just. the multi uh, la- layers of a human being um, yeah. i think that is something that has really uh, showcased your life has really showcased that well and now yeah. you're learning it and and that's a new skill that you've acquired along the way right that's my last question for today upon you yeah. know for a job for the last 2 years right so clearly like this is for your audience to hear like across the globe okay yeah I want you to be very very clear in what you're saying So that people yeah. understand what you want and what you need, and people yeah. to look for a job. Currently, right now, if you were to get a job in the next one two months, right? Yeah. What kind of a job would you like? So no, I left CA after I failed my APTC examination, but then my Masters of Commerce degree happened, and it just changed everything. I dropped from semester two to semester four. I topped in the overall. I have two trophies in the shelf right now. I won the. I won my first ever best student award. So uh, during that time only, I wanted to pursue financial planning as a career. So with all of this that you have right now, Rika, um, my question is: If somebody was to offer you a job in the next one month, what are you open to do? So I want to get into something which is known as fee-based financial advisory. So I'm also open to doing an accountant-related or financial research-related or financial analysis-related job, because that is also something which I can do. Finance on numbers is my epic uh, ultimate love. Okay. No, I think the message is clear now. So thank you for that, and that is what you know. Yeah. The audience will also hear. And if there is anybody who has such positions open, you know, I request all of you guys to please uh, let us know. Let Rifa yeah. know. Currently, you're based in Mumbai, but yeah. uh, you know, you're also looking at uh, mostly work from home options. It becomes difficult for you to travel and commute. Uh, using yeah. public transport, so the safest option for Rifa yeah. is that she works from home and that uh, she's able to um, really give her one one hundred percent from home. One thousand percent is the to higher. Because when I put my heart into something, I do it with all my heart. No, absolutely. and uh, your passion and your commitment i think can be just seen through the fact that you have 
close to 9000 followers on instagram you have about 5000 people following you on linkedin i actually want to be known as dr reepa the future wala in the future if it happens of course it will happen and that dr reepa the future wala is because of the phd in personal financial planning i am hoping that in india they start that degree so good luck with that rifa and i hope that the message is clear to all the people watching this Thank you so much, ma'am. Yep. Thank you so so much. <laughs> You're most welcome. And now is the next, the the last portion of the show, which is the fun part. So rapid fire with Rifa, all the way from Mumbai, Maharashtra, India. Are you ready? Yeah, kind of. Your favorite dessert? Uh, there are many. The list is huge, but the favorite is is Dajjal Halwa. Who is your favorite YouTuber for food shows? I don't watch many YouTube videos, so I may say it is you. <laughs> <laughs> Easy one for you. What's your favorite subject? Favorite subject, accountancy. <laughs> What's the subject you hate the most? Science. This is a yes/no question, okay? Yeah. Can you live without social media? No. <laughs> But that is my source of sanity these days. Who is your favorite superhero? My mother and my father. Do you prefer texting or calling? Depends upon the situation. <laughs> Who is your favorite actress? Top Stephen. Are you a morning person or a night person? I'm a morning person. Just give yeah. us one tip. Just one tip. So getting followers on Instagram It will be to be yourself completely. All right, fantastic! It was so lovely to chat with you, uh, and we've learned a lot from your life. And I hope that you will continue to carry on this positivity, this vigor, this energy. So thank you so much for actually giving me this platform to express my views. If stories like Rifa's inspire you and you want to hear more of such stories, please check out the rest of my videos and don't forget to subscribe. My name is Candy signing out for this week. I'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.